Aiden, run me through your top five players of the round. Okay, so I'm going to go from five to one, but I'll start with some honorable mentions. So I've got two honorable mentions here. Harris Andrews, I've got as an honorable mention, just because the elite two and a half quarter performance that he had, um, a pretty lackluster Brisbane defense, I'd say. We're going to jump into the analysis of the game soon, but he was exceptional Mm -hmm. um, and marshaled Mackay and uh, Kerno quite well. Or incredibly well and probably if they had a four quarter performance he would have made the five and my honor, other honorable mention is Tom Green okay goal okay. 32 speaks for herself we'll talk about it later great player I'll jump into fifth I put Harry Mackay actually okay. and this is a little bit because of his kicking woes the last couple of years and he looks like he's he slayed his demons here I mean he's kicked the winning goal with a minute to go not an easy kick from about 45 out, and he's kicked a couple other goals, and all round had a pretty good game. Came up the ground, took some really important marks. I was impressed, just based off what we've seen the last couple of years, and we've. I know personally, we've been known to make fun of him kicking. I'm I'm happy for Harry Mackay, but at the same time, like it, everyone seems to be quite shocked that a that a Coleman medalist can kick straight from 40 meters. But yes, yes, but based on the last two years, I was I was quite impressed with what it's, I saw. No, it's good because he's gone through some serious woes. Number four, another guy who was probably the one person in the GWS team who could have been calling for a, for an axe last year was Callum Brown, mm. who kicked five goals. I'd say a bit out of nowhere because he was sort of. Uh, he was sort of in the squad last year, but not really as an impact player. He was sort of just there. He can go, he can bring down a contest, but he's come against the reigning premiers and he's kicked five goals. Mm-hmm. So performance pretty much speaks for itself, Huge. but we'll unpack that a bit more when we go into the analysis. Uh, number three, I've got Isaac Heaney, who I read a stat somewhere. It was his best performance game he, he he's ever had or one of his top five games he's ever ratings. had. It was in player ratings. Best ever. Um, and that's not it. We were there uh, watching the game on Before Thursday Before the play night. ratings came out, I said it was the best game I've ever seen him play. And we were begging, begging for him to get it midfield time. And maybe he's only got that because of the injuries to the Swans. I reckon there's plenty of other things to get into with the Swans. So I'll say this now. I said straight after the game, uh, doesn't matter how much depth we have in the Swans midfield when everyone's back. When Adams, Parker, Mills and back, you got Warner, Robottom, James Jordan. Uh, Matt Roberts going through there. I don't care. I want he- I want Isaac Heaney. Angus to be Sheldrick. Un- Angus Sheldrick. I want Isaac Heaney to be our number one midfielder. I don't care who else is. Well, there. he's definitely got to be rotated through there uh, a, a lot more than he was last year. And I think we have enough firepower in our forward line, tall and small, that we don't need to rely on him up there. And so we can put his talent into the midfield. Anyway, number two, number two, I've got Matt Rowell, who had a career high twenty clearances. Absolutely tore up a pretty lacklustre Richmond team. I know we've talked about uh, the Richmond midfield getting absolutely smashed. They didn't look great. But still, you got to be there on the, on the game day and you got to perform. A guy that we've seen not actually get too many touches historically. He usually gets maybe 15 to 20. Because what has... Um, as- Kane Corns always criticises he can't get the ball on the outside. And, yeah, which it isn't a bad thing because his game, he was very mm. good at what he does. Um, but we saw him get what? He got over 30 touches. 33. 20 clearances. Definitely deserved to be in the top five. And I've got him at number two. Number one, I've put Brody Grundy. Uh, just got traded to the Swans, obviously. And he obliterated, I think that's the right way to put it, the number one Rockman in the competition in the last couple of years, a guy who who's kept him on the sidelines as well. Um, I know we expected big things from Brody Grundy, but I don't think we expected exactly what we were going to get, especially in this first game. Also, it's easy to say, having seen that performance, oh, he's a multiple-time All-Australian Rockman. He was the best Rockman in the league for a few years, but we haven't seen that for multiple years. That was a few years Grundy. ago. So it's easy to say that having seen it now, but we did not know that we were going to get that version of Brody Grundy, but we've got it. And it was amazing. I've never and seen a Ruckman dominate. The missing like piece that. of the Swans. I thought Tom Hickey was good. Um, and now I've seen this performance. I know it's just yeah. one performance, and we'll see what has to come in the next few weeks. We'll get a, a proper read. But if that's anything to go by, I'm very excited for what he can do this season. And, and I think he deserves my best player of the round. And well, I'll get into mine. And... You'll notice a few similarities, but I'll, I'll start off with my honourable mentions. To be fair, there weren't that many games to, to yeah, go by yeah, this yeah, round, yeah. so I wouldn't be surprised. Only only four games. Honourable mentions, I've got Charlie Kerno. Yeah, fair enough. He he was almost almost there. He did probably bring him back yeah. to life. Brisbane, we'll get into it, but to have made such a huge comeback, and he was just very instrumental in that, just, just dominating the forward line. I've got Nick Blakey in my honourable mentions. Fair enough. 
Uh, we'll talk about Nick Blakey when we yeah. talk about the Swans because he's to jump into. a massive part of what the Swans are doing. But he was just... He just tore apart the game at different times, just out of nowhere, in a, in a game that was very balanced for the most part until three-quarter time. And then my third honourable mention is Ben King. Five scoring, goals. Scoring five for Gold Coast, which was huge because he's a player that everyone like knows has this incredible potential. Sort of want him to take that next level, next he, step. Yeah, he has yeah. put it together for full seasons, but everyone knows he's still got that next step. Maybe with a team that's that's really firing, it could, it could work in his favour. Into my top five, I've got Tom Green, who we've already talked about yeah. at number five. Yeah. Awesome performance, one of the very, one of the Brownlow favorites. I think he's third favorite on the bookies list. That low, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got some guy called Marcus Montempelli ahead of him. Damn. Anyway, at number four, I've got Brent Daniels. Okay, the four goal twenty two. Four goals twenty two. I love Brent Daniels. He's just one of those players, like a sort of like a smaller Will Haywood type, just a guy that just plays an unselfish role, uh, always puts in a hundred percent and. Uh, creates elite pressure in the forward line and it doesn't matter what stats he puts up he's always going to have that impact and always going to be a valuable player for you and I love to see players like that stack up the stack up the stats for themselves as well and he got 4 and 20 disposals it's huge yeah. and then my 3-2-1 were the exact same as you Heaney 3 okay. Raul 2 and Grundy so it was one. a clear clear 3 in the same order? in the same order, same order in the yeah. same order so we've talked about them already we're going to jump into them a bit more when we go through the individual games 